This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles, on the Rockstar Radio Network. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd on the Rockstar Radio Network. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. To your success as an author, as your marketing, as you're reaching out. And of course, there's a zillion components, and there are new forms, new variations, new widgets, new gadgets, new thingamabobs, whatever you want to call it, apps are popping up on a daily basis. But there's also going to be, I would say, going to be basics. There are basics out there that will have new forms and uh, certainly more competitive things as time um, evolves. That you, when you look at social media, there are still the key players. You've got Facebook, key, key player. You've got a Twitter, a key player. You've got uh, Pinterest, especially for you authors who have very visual type of demonstrations and reach out. See, um, there is right now as the book shepherd, there are two books, cookbooks I'm working on. One, a wonderful book called For the Love of Paprika, which has been great fun. And the other one is on chocolate modeling. And that both these are highly, highly visual and recipes fly all over all over the universe multiple times via Pinterest. So Pinterest is a critical for the visual format. Then you've got the other players that that do come up and LinkedIn groups and we have done a specific on LinkedIn groups and I have one of my counterparts Carol McManus does the LinkedIn lady that always had tidbits but the, the key for LinkedIn of course is the group group and as an author you should be creating a group in your expertise, in your spe- specialty area. And just to share with you, one of the things that I did, I decided, okay, okay. I, it was after a radio show I, I did, hosting it. And I said, okay, I'm going to kickstart this and get this going. So I grew a group that I had piddled along with that had 60 members. And within a month, there were 500 members, and now there are over 700 members, and as LinkedIn calls it, it's very active, and dialogue goes on. So how do you find it? You just go to LinkedIn, and, and you know if you're not a member, for heaven's sakes, join up. Get your information out there, and you should. And then secondly, that you go to the groups where it says groups. Go to groups directory and put in author you with the letter U and a space between author and you and join up. And add your voice. Add your expertise. Ask a question. Start a discussion. And you'll be amazed at the dialogue that goes back and forth. And again, author you is for the author who is not the hobbyist or the dabbler. It's really the author who wants to be serious and get to the nitty-gritty of things. So we have LinkedIn, we've got Facebook, you've got Pinterest, you've got Twitter, and certainly you've got the blog arena. And those are going to be your biggies for right now. There will be morphing and and of, of each and uh you know, for example, LinkedIn is going to start doing some things that Facebook has been doing. Let's hope they don't decide to change it every month, but they're going to be doing that. What I want to focus on today is Twitter. And the Twitter basics, I'm going to be with you the uh, entire uh, format of the show. Uh, we will have Henry Aelia of Two Bits on, who does wonderful printing, um, and he'll give us little tips to carry in that arena on what you can do and, and some ideas for, especially we're in the middle of the fall right here on, on that. So let's get into Twitter. And I want to get into the basics of what, what it is all about and, and carry you through that. So what is Twitter? Well, it's, it's 140 characters. That's it. And you, you have that format. And you learn that every, 
every punctuation, every dot, every space, every hyphen, every question mark, every explanation, every parens, every everything, letter, number, counts as a character. It's 140. So savvy Twitterers, here's the first basic tip. Savvy Twitterers only use approximately 120 characters. Why? Because it allows for retweets and that uh, and hashtags to be used, and I'm going to get into that in a little bit. So that if you put out something, maybe you have a favorite quote, and if you put out the quote that other people say, oh, I love this, this is hot, and then they want to share it with their followers and their crowd, so they will do an RT or a retweet, and then what happens is their handle, their name gets attached to it. Well, you got to allow for that, otherwise your quote will get cut off. So think ahead here. Second basic is that you need to have a good name ID for yourself. For me, um, I have uh, a couple of Twitter accounts that I run, and I'll and I, there's three of them. And let me tell you what each is used for. One is under My Book Shepherd, and I hope you become a follower for My Book Shepherd. There's no spaces in there; it's just all run together. And then the other one I do for Author U is Author Letter U. So, and that's all together. I have a third one, which is my name alone, and I use that for very selfishly, very specifically. I follow very few people on that. I have there's there's hundreds and hundreds that follow me on that. Where on my book Shepherd and on Author You, there are mega thousands that are in that arena. My personal name is used when I want to just stay in close touch with certain people that I follow, that I like to share their information with my followers, that I can get to and see very quickly. Just as soon as I come up on my management system, I can see them and I can run it. So that's the reason why I use that. And, of course, with every Twitter account you have, you've got to open it up with a different email. They play that game. So be aware of that. All right, next thing is a, so a basic is we have an RT, that's a retreat. Then there's the DM. A DM is a direct message. That comes directly to you. So let's say some of your followers think something you put out was fabulous. They may send you a direct message. And etiquette says, respond and also and you know of course you, good thing is you, you're not writing a book to respond you're just saying thanks for the mention or I agree and or you know something like that and then um, for the retreat you want to do etiquette is you thank people who retweet your information uh, that, and, and why is that well another thing you want to know about is clout Clout, K-L-O-U-T. Clout is really the Internet influencer. They do a measurement. And the average clout out there, it's measured on a, a scale of zero, which means you're invisible, to 100 where you rock. And who would have 100? Those, those would be some of your, you know, movie stars. Um, or, or at least they'd be in the 90s. The Oprah is certainly going to be up there. Um, right now we're in, as we do this uh, show, we're in the heart of the, of the political campaign here in America. So both Romney and Obama would be very high 90s that people will follow it. When there is a political debate going on, most likely that the major news networks would have a high clout because people are following what they are are tweeting out as well as putting out on Facebook as well as um, uh, LinkedIn or any of the other alerts that Google is picking up. So the average is 20. So it's not real high. If you have a clout of 50 or above, you are in the top 5% of influencers globally. Just thought I'd share that with you. All right. There's also a URL shortener. And if you ever go into, let's say you're on Amazon and you say, oh, I love this book and I want to tell my friends about it. So you go up and you copy the link. And when you paste it into the email you're sending out to your pals to say, hey, look at this book, um, you'll notice it, it covers like two lines. Well, a URL shortener will shrink them up to just a, a, you know, a handful of characters versus the hundred you might see. 
And for I, I use uh, when I am displaying information and sending it out all at once, I will use something like uh, uh, Hootsuite, which is one of my favorites, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. But it has what they call an alley, O W dot L Y, an alley shortener, and um, and then you can go to Bitly, B I T dot L Y, and open an account, and any any uh, link that you get, you can put it into Bitly, for example. It will shrink it up. Then you take that and use that. And then last um, on on this list here on basics is you should know about hashtags. They are the secret sauce, the magic to all of this in getting out. And they will get you do amazing things for you um, and and bring it along so that you can see what's going on um, uh, in other people's tracking. For example, I have a couple of hashtags. One is book coach and one is author you, the letter U. And now I'm just going to expand to author Y-O-U because I have a new book coming out here shortly called author you. And we want to follow that. Now, what's a hashtag? It's a pound sign. Where did they come from? Actually, it came from a fire. And the chief of, of the fire department, the captain in San Diego, when people were trying to get news of what was going on in the fire, he decided to just add the pound sign and put San Diego fire, um, following it all together, closed up, no spacing. And people could go on Twitter, and he was putting out tweets like that. And that's what started these channels. Well, they're enormously popular. You want to use them. It is the key to the Magic Kingdom. If you go to hashtag.org, hashtag.org, you can put in and start finding out what is what are the popular hashtags in your genre. Why? Because you want to start using them in your tweets so that when you send out something, for example, after uh, this show goes into the podcast format and I have an archive and link, I will start sending out links and I will make up a line about them show, some key like the you know top 10 Twitter tips to use in marketing your book. And I would put a hashtag in front of marketing, a hashtag in front of book. I would put a hashtag in front of Twitter. And I would probably add a um, author you and put a hashtag in front of that and shoot that out to everybody I know. Not only does it go to my 20,000 followers, but it goes to everybody in those who follows those hashtags. It's a great way to do it. I'll be right back. I'm Judith Riles, and it's your guy for publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Is there a book in you or another? Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good. If you already have a book out, You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has possessed Jazz, punch, and panache. Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author U today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author U on Twitter at Author U and on Facebook at Author U, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author U, where the author goes to become seriously successful. Change the way you publish online. WaveCloud is a new form for authors to manage all their books' information in one place from start to finish, including pricing and listing summary. To learn more or sign up for email updates, visit wavecloud.com. Every- 
Every picture tells a story. And it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for... Excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards, including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evie Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival Award, and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303-985-4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. in the heart of Twitter and I'm talking about some of the basics and that I was just kissing as we went into our break on hashtags. They are the key to the magic kingdom of Twitter and when you start using them routinely in your tweets you will find that you may only have 500 followers but by for example as an author uh, myself as a book shepherd myself that when I go out and put uh, uh, the pound sign the hashtag in front of the word book that has the potential of going out to a couple of hundred thousand more people when I put the, put it in authors there's another couple of hundred thousand more people. Another common one I use for the publishing arena um, is get published. There's another few hundred thousand. And if you use, you know, don't use more than four in a tweet because it starts getting, you know, the, the eyeball says, yeah, reject. Um, but when you start looking at that, your your tweets could go out to a half million people easily, potential easily. So that's the real, when you're marketing your book, so if, if you have a book yourself um, that you're trying to go out and, and, and you start with what your genre is, I mean, you could do fiction, you could do that. And, and, and of course, if you, if you have a book that you're really promoting, you want to use pound sign Goodreads and, and move that out there because that opens up hundreds of thousands of people who are looking for books in that read. And Goodreads is a superb resource for peer reviews, for people chatting and talking about your book and moving it along. Um, and th that if you've just placed it up on Amazon, you put the hashtag pound sign in front of Amazon. Dot com and then you would have the link you use the shortener that that they include uh, that, that you should be using whether it's a bitly or um, as, as I said I use Hootsuite but there's tweet deck and there's uh, you know a social oomph there's there's several of them my preference is Hootsuite and that they just have a, a shrinker it's a, it's a shrinkier link whatever and uh, you just have it there and it adds it right on. And then if you think, let me get a little hint here, if you think that you're going to be tweeting this particular phrase, uh, message, more than once, it's the old copy-paste. Now, let me just go ahead and, and throw out, uh, since I've said Hootsuite a couple of times, I think it's critical to be working with a management system like a Hootsuite. And it's, it's free for up to up to five streams. So that means a stream is a Twitter account. 
So I've got three Twitter accounts, so that takes out of that. All right, I have multiple Facebook accounts, fan pages for different books. Um, there's one for, you know, myself as the book shepherd. Uh, there's one for author you that I manage. So I, I'm over five real quick. So I have to pay a few dollars and it's just a few dollars every month because I travel or I, you know, may be away from the office for a few days. And one of the things about tweeting is you want to get into the habit of tweeting every day and you're thinking, Oh my God, I can't take on another thing. Well, this is where the Hootsuite will take care of it um, for you. I was on a trip where I was out of the country for a week. I was able to set up multiple tweets for every day, and they were scheduled. There's, It's a schedule. Hootsuite is like a schedule. And I could schedule them coming out, you know, at 10.05, 11.05, 1.03, what, whatever I wanted um, during the day. And I and I could do it up a couple of months ahead of time. I did that with my blogging and all that. So there, no one had any idea, unless they knew me, that I was away from my home base in Colorado. So this is the way you, you, you can literally take an hour on a weekend or whatever your day of choice is or evening of choice. And you could set up this all for the whole week and have it done and you don't have to think about it. But meanwhile, your fans are getting interaction from you. And it's just a very smart marketing business thing to do. All right, so how about some tips for um, sparking up your Twitter stream? Well, think that Twitter, it's global. We're talking global in a nanosecond. It, when it's out, it's out. And once others start to recognize your name or your handle, again, as it's called in Twitter land, don't be surprised that you might befriend a few people and connect with them. And you could end, I was at a conference and, and, someone, and someone said, you're author you. So that was kind of fun when people start uh, connecting. You, as I mentioned earlier, you want to track these hashtags. So use hashtags.org and look for ta- hashtags that are with Within your genre, your area of interest. Now, it, it's not just the genre of what your book's about. It could be that your book could be about turnarounds, company turnarounds. It could be about emotional distress. It could be about uh, reducing anxiety. It could be nutritional. It could be ex- exclusively business. It could be designed for top execs. Whatever it is, you want to start and uh, play around and find out what are those hashtags. Um, that are being it's kind of structured that they're following. So how do you find out some of that? Guess what? This is where you start following you. You need to, one of the rules is you follow the leaders in your genre and in your industry. And you know what? Pay attention to the hashtags they're using because they're the ones you're going to emulate. You're going to, this is total mimic time. And you're going to start keeping track besides creating your own. I want you to create your own hashtag. I've shared the three that I use, book coach, author you, and author you. Um, But create your own around you. So uh, that makes a huge difference. So schedule treats throughout the day. Don't clog them all up at 8 in the morning. And it used to be an 8 in the morning, whatever your local time was. 8 to 12 used to be the standard. But you know what? This is global. So I have people who have in my LinkedIn group, it is amazing how many people have LinkedIn in India. It is amazing to me how many people are a member of our group from Australia and New Zealand. Um, we've got we've got members in Singapore. Well, we're talking a good dozen hours time difference from where I am. So you need to have things going on and scheduled literally late at night. How long does a tweet last? What a great question. Oh, 15 seconds to maybe an hour. How can it last an hour? Well, if you have followers who don't have a lot of people they're following a lot of action in their own personal tweet stream, you're going to have more longevity there. But the reality is it's boom, 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 boom. So Twitter's the giant cocktail party. And when you use these hashtags that I keep referring to, I want you to think them to rooms in a house. 
Or it could be you could be in a big ballroom at a conference and you know they have table rounds and at this table there's an expert on this and in the next table there's an expert on this and a table across the room there's an expert on this. And what that means is when the hashtag is, is all those little tables all over the place and you are just hopping around and connecting with them. Retweet. Retweet gets you notice, gives you a higher clout score. It gets you, um, it gets acknowledgement from the people who are involved with the tweeting. And lastly, I think it's a, a good idea in this, this segment here is to really think about creating your own Twitter chat. Um, why not say, okay, Tuesdays, afternoons at four o'clock. I'm live on Twitter and you'll be using your, you, you go into the, the, the tweet chat. Um, and you can really, really schedule it and do it, and you start letting all your followers know, hey, I'm live, you can ask me a gazillion questions, and here's the etiquette courtesy is that what you want them to, you want to let your followers have a heads up before you start a tweet chat, because there is going to be a slew of tweets coming from you. I mean, you can um, literally have... Uh, you know, 50, 60 tweets just coming from you and then other people are following and they're going to be using the hashtag that you create for that. So that's the way to do. Now, how do you go about building your following? And we have, we have a minute before we're at the bottom of the hour here and I just want to start you on thinking that way. People love quotes. They love quotes. So create a separate document and you start gathering up every quote that you love, that inspires you, that maybe tweaks your funny bone. Um, and go in and start having those and start peppering your daily tweets with one or two of them. I mean, I, you know, I like to do goofy things like it's, you know, today is National Kiss or Toe Day. So where do you find those kind of things? Go into weird holidays, Google weird holidays and start looking at those and you'll come up with them and people, it'll amuse them and put a little smile on their face. And that you can move into those arenas and, and, and it's just part of continuing connecting. You want to go build your following. You want to, uh, pepper your tweets with ahas, tips, how to's. Remember the three S's as I close out this section here. The three S's be snappy, be sassy and be salty in the format that you use. So get their attention. Have- is your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles and we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the rockstar radio network since 1987 color house graphics has set the standard for quality book production whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run depend on color house to help you You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing with Judith Bryles, we will provide you a discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. Do you need postcards that make a statement? How about business cards, flyers, brochures, or NCR forms? TuVets is the solution for all your printing needs. Providing services specially designed for authors, we deliver exceptional quality colored printing. Most important of all, we specialize in reducing your printing costs. No more waiting. No more standing in lines at your local printer. Online proofing. With our pricing tools calculator, you can get instant quotes on all your printing products, as well as shipping rates all over the United States. Just a few clicks of the mouse and you're on the way to discovering how easy and convenient online color printing should be. Contact our friendly, human, account representatives. We recognize that you want answers, not voice prompts. Visit our website at www.tu-vets.com or call one 800 
When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, one of my favorite people in the whole world is Henry Ayaya, and I and I, I love Henry because he's Henry, but I also love him because he just has a superb company that creates a, not only state of the art, but just excellent products. And I just I have to do a brag for you, Henry. You don't even know I'm going to do this, but we had one of our author you uh, members wanted to create a vertical banner, you know, that you hang and you know when these five six foot banners, and they went to a very well-known um, company to do it. It had been professionally laid out by a designer and then put over to produce it. And the the final production s- literally sucked, to put it bluntly. And and she called me in a panic, and I said, just call Henry. See if Hen- Henry can fix this thing. And so I, I saw the finished product at a meeting the other day. And not only did Henry fix it, he made it look even better. So um, <laughs> and, and the pricing was extraordinarily reasonable. So, Henry, you should be making sure you tell people about those vertical banners that, you know, All are right. five. All right. Sure. What's What's our tip for the day? Uh, well, uh, Judith, I wanted to talk about uh, the three real popular items that we've uh, produced are the bookmarks, postcards, and uh, flyers. <clears throat> the bookmarks, obviously, even if you have an electronic book, uh, is something that you can pass out because people that are reading electronic books probably have a bunch of books anyway, and bookmarks are something uh, useful. People will hang on to them, and they're like, little mini brochures for you. And so um, one of the really great items that we that we offer to publishers, and they're available besides in our standard glossy papers, but if you have something that wants to look a little different, uh, we also offer it on linen cover stock and smooth uncoated cover stocks to get different surfaces and different looks to these bookmarks. Um, also, the postcards. I mean, a great way to uh, contact people. Our postcards are available in quantities as small as 250. You can do very targeted uh, mailing. Let's say you're going to do a book signing or something in particular. You can uh, mail small quantities to particular targeted groups. And then, of course, the flyers, uh, which are ever popular. Uh, one of the groups that uh, <clears throat> we supply flyers to are the uh, people from IBPA, Independent Book Publishers Association. And for many, many years, they've been doing group mailings to libraries and schools. 
and it seems to work very well for their members, so we've supplied to them and offer especially good pricing to people that are participating in these group mailings. And then um, I guess the other real important thing is that anything that you produce in terms of a printed piece is going to be supporting your Internet presence. I mean, we all know what the Internet is doing for for marketing, but a way for many people to get uh, uh, information as to where to go on the Internet for whatever it is they're searching is through a printed piece. There's a significant percentage of Internet orders are driven by people that see uh, uh, something in printing. And so we want to make sure we put the QR codes on all of our printed pieces. And the last thing is just be aware always to check our website. Uh, we have a great monthly special, business cards at 50% off this month. And um, uh, you can always find us at 2 vets. Dot com that's t u hyphen v e t s dot com and I always do encourage our customers please call me I love to speak uh, to all of our customers and our eight hundred number is eight hundred eight nine four eight nine seven seven Terrific, and I, and I should say, that'll do it, and you know, I, I have to add on the business cards that we needed, um, hubby, my hubby John does editing, and we needed something to do, and I called, Henry, <laughs> I said, <laughs> we need to do something, and he says, well, here's some ideas, blah, 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 and bang, we had it, and it was done, so yeah, they're great. Yeah, yeah, and, Judith, and, thank you very much for your support, and to all of your listeners, uh, please do give us a, a call, we're always here, ready to help. Great. So that's Henry at two vets, tu hyphen vets dot com. All right. So we're back to you're welcome, and you're we're back to moving on into Twitter. And I was talking about some of the things that you could do to build your following. So number one tip was to use quotes. And and they don't have to always be related to what your topic is. You know, they could just be inspirational. They could be a little motivational. They could be cheeky. Um, they could they have a little fun type of thing. And and also vary your quotes so that it could be something that maybe you found a killer infographic that kind of describes the whole process of whatever it is your expertise is. Share it with the world. Um, and and that kind of thing. So it, it's that peppering your tweets with the ahas. You want to become known as someone who has good, solid information um, as you build that up. So uh, Twitter's about you know sharing and connecting with others. It's not about what you had for breakfast. Um, and and I have to tell you, I, I I have unfollowed several people when I start getting the, these. This is my personal streams. When I start seeing that you know I'm on the corner of you know Smith and and Hamden, and I'm going to have breakfast with Sue. Please do not do not filter that with up. Those are like that could be a direct message if I cared, but I don't want to see it in my my stream. So you want to learn the etiquette with the do's and don'ts, and I've been mentioning a few of those as we've gone through here. Um, and and it's a must in building your your own base. Follow the leaders, and you can go once you figure out when the leaders is. And I had quite a dialogue with one of my clients who has a wonderful business book. I mean, this guy, uh, Phil Varley, who wrote Failure is Not an Option, and he has a, really a 12-step program for turning any company around and actually without ever laying off anybody, without laying off anybody, how to turn it around and start saving money and growing it again. And he has been, oh, my gosh, I can tell you the heels are dug into the ground. You know, what's this twit stuff? And I don't want to be a Twitter. And I, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I said, Phil, if Tom Peters can be on Twitter, if people like Guy Kawasaki can be on Twitter, if Jack Welch can be on Twitter, if and I started just naming off a huge amount of names that he knew very well and respected in in the business industry, that all of a sudden 
he started changing his tune and coming back to that. Well, not only do you follow these people because you want to see what their streams look like and what they're talking about and what they're sharing and does it connect or not connect, but you can also go in and behind the scenes and start following some of their followers. And guess what? They may follow you back and that will help build you up. And why do you want to follow people who are following some that you think rock is a rock star? Because if you're following them and then you go out and follow the people who follow, they in turn are highly likely to follow you as well. That brings you the followers actually that you want in the first place. You want to pay attention to what the flow is of, uh, of what these people, these experts, the ones you respect, are talking about. And you know what? They're, you may morph it and take it to a twist and reword it and then include whatever link is that they had that they pulled from someone else. That's how it keeps morphing and changing. All right. So how do you participate um, in these conversations as we go into? Well, you want to respond. Um, so you can do that directly message as I mentioned you want to retweet uh, and you include their handle so they get that recognition you want to mention you want to participate in those Twitter chats you want to recommend pay attention to, to what people suggestion follow and you go out and you recommend those and that and what it brings into <clears throat> is that you Twitterer will develop a reputation for an expert, being the expert. You have an area of expertise um, that, one, you'll provide useful information for a specific topic. So I know if people are going to follow me on the, the Author You or the My Book Shepherd uh, tweet channels, that they're going to get information about publishing, writing, authoring. They're, that's where that's where I will be going down the path. That um, I'm going to put up a post and 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 on your blog. By the way, in your blog, you when you put up a new blog, you want to copy the link to the blog. You want to come up and you want to schedule multiple tweets with a variation of wording a little bit, and link it to the blog so you can drive your audience there. You you want to actually participate in Twitter chats, be a featured guest, and you want to always, 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 no exception, use hashtags. So that's how you develop those areas of expertise um, in you and you move along. And I will tell you, after every show, I create a minimum of eight to ten different tweets around the theme of the show. And, and and then I add hashtags, and then I start scheduling them going out. So that's how you do it. Now, when we come back, I'm going to talk about some of the mistakes um, that you do, and I'll again review my top 10 Twitter tactics. This is Judith Bryles. You're listening to your guide to book publishing. <laughs> This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Writing and reading are moving to the cloud. WaveCloud represents a whole new community for writers and readers to connect, communicate, evaluate, and share. Writers hone their craft and build their business. Readers build their favorites. Sign up for updates at wavecloud.com. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. 
Dr. Judith Browse will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd if you want to create a book with no regrets. Give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Alrighty. Okay, so we're in the heart of Twitter land, how to expand and really grow your book marketing. And I'm telling you, when you incorporate Twitter, you start building up. This should be really included in your initial game plan of, of your your crowd. This is your crowd that you start building and people that know that, you, that when you're ready to introduce a new book, you've already got lots of people ready to hear about it. You may have been sharing little tidbits as you went along with it. Um, when you have a special Maybe there's a special book launch, a special deal, an Amazon day. Maybe there's something free for you. You decide to participate in the KD- KDP uh, program with Amazon, which means basically that you've agreed to offer your ebook free um, for a certain period of time to everybody and then you convert it over and so um, and, and that could be a heck of a strategy there's some interesting things that you can do especially when it's early on um, and in that and you really haven't gone full blown and letting the whole world know about everything you get your legs into the program and they start paying attention so Twitter, it could be your best friend. And um, and I will tell you, this is confession, I was one of those heels dug in thinking, my God, I can't take on another thing. I mean, I work a long, long day and into the night. And I often work seven days a week because of clients and their needs. Um, sometimes the only time I can get together with them is on a Sunday morning. And, and I just have to work with them that way. So you, you you do what you can do, but you want to come back and use, and as I mentioned, Hootsuite. Hootsuite is H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E dot com. Get involved with a management system that is extraordinary, low cost, highly efficient, is integrated with your key social platforms that you can learn to get information out in mass at the same time, at your convenience time, and yet have it scheduled throughout a 24 hour uh, period that works best for you. And you can do this way ahead of time. And, I, and I'm going to tell you, it will make your life so much easier. Um, what I can do in an hour, I, I would have to have someone working all day 
because of using just a simple tool like Hootsuite. So do get involved with it. It's free if you have less than five channels, um, which could be, you know, it could be two Facebook pages. It could be a, a Twitter account. You could have a LinkedIn. And you could just say whatever you're saying, you say it to everybody all at once. And, and you will um, thank me if you haven't already started using it. All right, so let's hop into some um, mistakes to get done in Twitter land and one of the one of the big ones is that you're you're invisible and and you're saying wait a minute I'm Twitter how, how could I be invisible well dear listener you could be invisible but not having a crummy profile um, and you want to make sure that you have uh, what is it that you do um, what are you an expertise in what what is it that you want your voice known for and about. So make sure that when you set up your profile, in fact, I want all of you to go to your Twitter accounts, and you should do this for Facebook and everything else as well, but I'm talking about Twitter today, is that I want you to go to your Twitter profile and really look closely. You know, you don't have a lot of words to use to describe it. What is it that you have in there? So when people are searching for an expert or a solution, or something is that keyword. Do you know what your keywords are? Are you using keywords in your tweets, in your blogs, in anything you post? Go, go to key, Google, Google keywords and find out which are the most ones that are used that can bring it into play. So number one mistake is you're invisible, and you're invisible not because you're not tweeting. You're invisible because your profile doesn't adequately and accurately say who and what you are. Number two, you don't include your website in your profile. So make sure that, and, and, and there is a specific spot that Twitter has that says, you know, what's the URL? Put it in so people can go and find out what's going on. Number three mistake, you don't have a photo. Now, exception. If you look at the author you Twitter, you'll find that it has the logo for the author you organization. That's what that's coming from. If you look at the my book Shepherd, which is me personally, it's going to have kind of a, a picture of my banner. And and if you listen to Henry a little bit earlier, that I referred to a story that one of our listeners had, had run into with creating a banner. That's one of my banners that I'm in front of. All right. So, but it's a picture of me. So people want to, they want to see who it is. They don't want to see a dog. You know, not everyone is dog lovers. They don't want to see a graphic that is so bizarre. What is this? So use a photo that they can connect with. Um, and if it's a, if it's a company, maybe your corporate logo. I mean, certainly Coca Cola is not going to put the CEO um, picture on that. They're going to use the Coca Cola and that kind of branding. So that's number three. Number number four. Some people become so paranoid that they feel they have to mark the box that says "Protect my tweets." What in the world are you thinking? Protect them from who and what? And it's almost like, well, the only people can see my tweets are going to be in, you know, my private circle. Twitter is global and you want to reach out to as many people as you can, especially when we're talking about books and authoring and marketing and writing and selling. So uncheck that box. You want it public. Next up is that people say, well, well, how often should I tweet? And um, I, I think that if you can put out a tweet, at least you know one to four an hour. I mean, it, and find out what your key hours for your kind of audience. But typically, I have ten tweets that go out every day, every day. And don't be afraid to do a repeat once in a while. You may, maybe you send one out. It goes out at eight fifteen. You know what? Go copy paste. Send it out again at one one fifteen. And um, you know, it's a whole new crowd looking at things by then. And by the person who gets back online, maybe after work. I mean, that Twitter stream is so long gone they never saw it. That's why you do duplicates and repeats sometimes. No. 
other boo-boo that people do is this is not the time to do ranting and raving. So don't go negative in your tweets. It, it doesn't build your base unless you want a lot of negaholics with you. And then when you create your Twitter account, what you want to do is to be careful in how long your handle, meaning your name is, is you don't want to have a handle that says the girl that loves rock and roll. How many characters have you just used up? Um, keep it short. If you, you know, if you can try to keep it in, in 10, 12 in that area. Uh, my friend Joan Stewart is known as a publicity hound, so that is her handle. It's, it's certainly more than 10 characters, but that's how she gets tied in. And she then when she does the rest of her tweets, that it's all, you know, she pays attention for the retweeting and everything else and makes it always, always much shorter in her message. She would Joan would never use 140 characters to get it all out. All right, and then which leads me in: don't max all the characters. Keep moving around. Leave some space so people can retweet it. And then this is absolutely important: TMI. Don't give too much information. You know, this you don't need to say, "Well, I'm checking in for a hysterectomy," or "I'm, uh, you know, I, I I'm scared to death. I'm filing for a divorce tomorrow." That don't put that out there. It's too much information. So keep it down. And then my last uh, list on my mistake is that not being that go-to person. Don't be that. That you, you've got to really. People want information. They want it solid. Um, they they'll check out your. Hand hashtag they'll check out to go into your your entire twitter stream looking for information if you gave it out on that so that's why when you write your messages if it's about marketing books using twitter get that right up front um, so they can see this is what they're looking for so those are some of the mistakes and then i want to recap quickly some of those tactics focus 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 Make sure that you, you know, who you are, what you are, um, and and what the message is. That's it. You want to be predictable. That means that you consistently and often uh, keep in mind the kind of the one to four rule that you, you know, no more than one to four per hour. Use hashtags in every tweet, every tweet. Know what the jargon is in your field for, for social media. Um, use the Twitter shorteners and you want to use, uh, use phrases, you know, and hand, either handles, hot tips, tips, techniques, secrets, mistakes, those kind of phrases. Make sure you respond to every tweet uh, that the people, when they mention you, the retweet, respond, thank them, uh, create a chat, participate in chats. Make your tweets retweetable so they have that high content field. And lastly, you know, spread a little Twitter love. Um, retweets are relevant to your clout, to your topic, and it makes you just bloody good in Twitter land. So those are some of my techniques in working with Twitter. It's what's billed us from, you know, a few hundred to mega thousands, and that will only grow. I hope you join in and follow me at, uh, the, at Author You and My Book Shepherd. This is Judith Bryles, and you've been listening to Your Guide to Book Publishing. Until next time. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles.